Hey spotties, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to How to Beat Prince on uh, Civilization 6. Now, we had just finished our turn last turn and we have just explained how Kabul had become our, um, we had become the suzerain of Kabul and now Kabul was on our side in attacking England. And we also found a natural wonder with a barbarian encampment. And I suppose it's probably worth it just to stick a pin on it. Uh, if you like it, stick a pin on it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just, just so that we know, just, um, you know, cause, cause I find it sometimes when I'm looking around, like visually, let me delete this pin for a moment, like visually with this, with the yield icons on, I have a hard time. Like if I'm just like looking around, I have a hard time telling the difference between this tile and this tile. So I think putting pins on things and it's especially when there's a, um, when the yield icons are on. So I think it's worth it just to put a pin on it. If you, if you see a tribal village that you can't get straight away, just stick a pin on it. And then I know um, once I unlock the, uh, which one is it? The shipbuilding technology, which we are going to be unlocking fairly soon. I know when I unlock that, that there will be um, places for my scouts to go to get new, um, new tribal villages, which is something I'm going to want to do fairly soon. Okay, all my units have moved and stuff. We're gonna wait and we're gonna see if they finish the Oracle before we kill this city. I'm over here, there's no pressing concerns. I've more or less won the war. So I'm just gonna rest all my units. Anyone who needs to level up, I'll level up. So commando is pretty useless in my opinion. Um so I'm going to go up to, but I also want to get to Elite Guard, but I think I'm going to go for Tortoise here, just to give them even more defense. And any units that are not full health, I'm going to have them rest. Otherwise, I'm going to push them on. Unit needs orders here. I have my galley. I'm still exploring, and it looks like we found the top of the map. That's pretty good. We're going to want to do a little bit of a loop around here. Okay. I want to make sure this says in camp. Uh, so unit needs orders. This is an archer. What could we do with this archer? Nothing at the moment, so we're going to end this turn. And uh, the, the quick, the hotkey for, for skip turn is just spacebar. I just always have my thumb on spacebar, so if I don't know what to do with a unit, I just say, eh, do nothing. Okay, so this archer has another promotion. And we're going to take the plus combat strength versus and land and naval units, because it's going to make it stronger. This unit can attack, so we will. Now the question here for me is, this city isn't good enough for me to attack, but maybe I want a campus, so I could kill this city and take the campus. Let's have a look at Palanque. Well, they have me wanting to, they want me to trigger a bonus for mythicism, or I could just kill them and take their campus. I think killing them is a pretty attractive idea, because they already have a campus. They're not in very good land, but I'm just really only killing them for their campus. So that's it for this turn. Our horseman is finished, which we can now use to kill Manchester. Run along there. So Pas Pasar Gade has finished um, the horseman. And how far away are we from getting engineering? We're not too far away from it, so I'm thinking it's probably about time that I considered getting these ancient walls. Now I could go for another horseman. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do also. And I think I will. I'll grab one more horseman, just because it's a, um, having two horsemen with the, with, it would really round out my army. You know, it would really tie the army together, make it look good. It's like that rug. Excellent, and we found Valletta. And we were the first people to find Valletta, so we get another envoy. So we're we're even producing units even faster than we were, because we get another uh, production boost. And they have they want me to trigger the Eureka for engineering, which is building walls. So yeah, we're definitely going to build walls after this um, to get this Eureka. And there, um, 
their unique bonus is that city center buildings and encampment district buildings can be bought with faith. That's actually really good. And that's something we definitely want to exploit in this game. So we're going to be probably getting a couple of holy sites. To see what we can make out of that. You might even try to build Petra in Palanque. Or Palanque? I don't know how to say it. <clears throat> um... So we're going to start moving units over to Palanque. Because they've built a campus and we want a campus because um, you get great scientist points for it. And you get science, so um, that's kind of what we're doing. We're killing people for stuff. Now, where am I going to send this galley? Well, I want to explore, but I also want it to be in position for our war with Norway. Because in Prince, the easiest way to win is to just kill all the AI. Um... So that's what I'm going to teach you to do. I think domination is the easiest victory to pull off. So that's what I'm teaching you how to do. Because it's something that you, you can reliably learn how to fight and kill the AI. Just by having lots of units, by using timings, um, by using powerful units. We're going to keep suppressing Manchester until the cavalry arrive. Next turn. I'm hoping he finishes the Oracle, but it doesn't bother me if he doesn't. Oh, so we found Germany. Greetings. And similarly, we're going to say hello to Germany. And she wants a peace, but I don't want peace because I just want to... I'm, this is my win-win condition is to kill her. Now I could just take their capital and that would be that. But, you know, it's more fun to do a complete kill. So I'm going to talk to Germany because I just met him and I'm going to send him a delegation. The delegation is just to keep him happy, um, make him more willing to trade with me. And so I get a little bit more information about what he's doing. And so where is Germany? It looks like I haven't actually found where Germany is. We're continuing to explore. We found another encampment. I'm going to want to put a pin on this because this is this is worth gold potentially later on in the game. Put a pin on it and uh, then eventually I'll get around to gathering all this stuff. Okay, so we have our trader in Tarsus. And this one is going to be moved over to Passargade. Um, actually, I'm going to send it over to Bristol. Um, that's because I want this city. This city is pretty weak at the moment. It has very bad production. So I want to put a trader in it to help it boost it. And make it more useful. So Tarsus built a trader. And now it's got to think about what it can do. It's, a, it's getting very high in its housing. But the problem is it doesn't have many amenities. It does need a builder because it's working a lot of unimproved tiles. However, we can only really improve the sugar. We can't really improve this yet. We could chop it and then put a mine on it. But I think I'm happy with the, this tile as it stands. So a builder here isn't incredibly pressing. I would like to chop out the jungle because I don't really like rainforest as a tile. Um, so that's definitely something I can look into. And in fact... Uh, we may do that. I could also go for a commercial hub here to get extra trade routes. Trade routes are really powerful and really good. Um, so this is definitely an option for me to consider. I could also get an encampment. I would really like another encampment. I don't really need any units. Um, a monument would be quite nice too because it would uh, help it grow its tiles a little bit quicker. So I might just pick up a monument so that it picks up more tiles. And you know what? That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do, especially since our culture is a little bit underneath our science. I'm going to pick up a monument here. We're going to move our horsemen over because we're getting ready to kill Manchester. And uh, this unit has now earned enough experience for a promotion. And so we're going to take incendiary so that it attacks cities more efficiently. And then we're going to continue to suppress the city with this archer. Uh, so, we're in a position now where this immortal is ready to level up to. We're in a position now to start attacking Palanque or Palanque. So we're going to do that. We're going to declare war on Palanque, Palanque um, because we want their campus. And, you know, we think there might be a good Petra city in here. Maybe, maybe it's not a very good Petra, but there's definitely a few good tiles in here that we want. Um, we mainly just want to take over another city, get more experience on our units and all that sort of stuff. Because we're not quite ready to go kill Norway. 
And we're going to declare war on Palenque. And we're going to begin killing their units. Killing the archers is very important. Because archers are the units that um, act as force multipliers when they attack together. Just doing a little bit of scouting up here, and then we're going to bring the galley around to be in position to fight in the Norway War. Next turn. Looks like an archer just came out of that city. They sent a delegation. Your delegation is most welcome. You want to just generally be... You don't want to antagonize the AI too much, because they might attack you when you're not ready, and they might do it when you don't want to be attacked. Okay, so it looks like we just claimed our first great person, and it's a great general. And it's Boudica, who gives plus 5 combat strength and plus 1 movement to classical medieval era units within 2 tiles. And just to clarify, what units are classical? Basically, um, if you see this line here, units after this are considered classical. So for example, our horsemen, our immortals, will get plus 5 combat strength and plus 1 movement speed, but our archers will not, because the archers came in the ancient era. So we're going to transfer this general over here to London with the transfer to another city button that great generals have. Oh, and it also gives you the ability to kind of see where barbarians are on the map. We're going to transfer over to London so this um, great general is in position to start supporting this army. We're going to shoot the city again. Then the horseman is going to come in and finish the city off. So I think England has been completely eradicated. Oh, excuse me. And we're going to keep this city also. This rate, this archer is ready to be upgraded, so I will. And it's going to take incendiaries, which gives it attack strength against cities. We're going to move this immortal over here. Oh, that was too much. Whoops, I meant to move it there. I forgot I didn't have the full movement. So I'm going to attack here. And then here, I'm going to take another level up. For the tortoise formation, I'm going to move here with this archer and shoot. Um, and something I never really explained about combat is um, how combat damage is calculated. Is If you see down here um, at the bottom, you see where it says 36 versus 19. That is um, the differential between the two units strength dictates um, how much damage you do. So for example, my immortal has, uh, if, has 17 more um, damage, more attack power than the warrior. Which means, um, so roughly how it works is third, if you have 30 more attack power than a unit, you kill it in one hit. That's, that's how the system works. It's a relative system and that's it. If you have 30 more attack power, you hit, kill it in one shot. And since I have 17 more attack power, you can see how the health bar is glowing. That, uh, that dictates how much health is going to be killed. So if I were to hover over a different unit, you can see it estimates roughly how much damage I would do. And if I were to take my archer, for example, who has similarly 25 power, but only but only 25, you can see how proportionally the archers do less damage. They only have um, six, more, 6 more attack power than the unit, so they don't do as much. But there, yeah. That's a kind of a, it's a rough explanation. It's it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, if your unit is about thirty attack power higher, you're going to kill pretty quickly. So, I have a trader here in back three, and I'm going to be sending it over to to Pasargade, um, because it gives me plus one food, plus three production, and plus two, uh, gold and culture. Now, something I didn't explain here about the decisions I made in making an encampment and a commercial hub is, um, so each district that you build, when you send an internal trade route to the city that built the district, it changes the yield. So if I look over here at, for example, a campus, it says trade yields. On domestic destinations, it gives plus one food. That means any city that builds a campus and gets a trade route sent to it, that trade route is going to have plus one food. 
And similarly, on the Commerce Hub, it has plus one production. So any city, any trade route sent to a city with a commercial hub will have plus one production. And the encampment also has plus one production. And that was kind of why I built this, because I wanted these two districts, I wanted the plus production districts, so that the trade routes that I created, I could send them to my capital city and get a lot of production out of it, out of my empire. Production is really important because it's what you use to build all of the things in the game. And just to show an example of this in, 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 in sort of action, I have this city here. It has plus three production, and it's going to take 16 turns to make this trader. But by moving a trader over here, and I can't, oh, I'm just out of range of Passar, Passar Day, which is, is bad luck. I'm just out of range of my capital, but I can send it over to London, for example. Um, I'm going to get plus two food, plus two production. And these are the important ones. These, these are just bonuses. Plus two food, plus two production. So I'm going to send that there. And now it's going to take 10 turns. So I've just taken six turns off of the city's build order, which is really, really nice. I have back three here. And it just finished its trader. And we're building another trader. So let's have a little bit of a think about back three as well. I could use more culture in this city because it's growing very slowly in terms of its tile growth. Oh, we are about to research the construction technology, which means we're going to get games and recreation automatically. So we may as well stick one turn into something else. Or we could just not care about it. I think we just won't care about it. It's more efficient to do it this way, um, but it also introduces the possibility to make mistakes and forget. I'm going to try it and try to remember. So we have back three here. Uh, so I would like another monument because it helps the city grab tiles and I want to grow um, more tiles here. I also want ancient walls in one of my cities. I would like a builder. Uh, I don't really need any many many more units at the moment. I would also I would actually like a battering ram at some point because like I, I think Norway is going to have walls. And I think Stockholm is also going to have walls. So I think it's perfectly reasonable here to build a battering ram in this city because I'm going to use it to take out these other cities. So here's Manchester. And I think similarly in Manchester, I'm going to build a shrine because I want the faith. Because I'm going to be able to use that faith potentially down the line. I'm going to keep moving this galley down around here. Now this galley got into a bit of a combat trouble. It came up against a fully healthed um, uh, quadrireme, which is stronger than a galley. So I'm going to move it out of here. Next turn. taking a little bit of damage on our units and we just want to be a little bit careful so we just got the inspiration for games and recreation which automatically finished it for us so now we can build entertainment complexes we can build arenas we can build a coliseum wonder which is a really good wonder by the way and we should definitely consider building it and we also have insulate which is a plus one housing in all cities with at least two specialty districts create with the heart we also unlocked the terracotta army and that's something we may consider building uh, we also have the siege tower so if we look at this new thing we got, we got Insulae. I'm not too I'm not too sold on it being very good, so I'm going to skip it. But we are going to stop building cavalry for a moment. So we can just put this up here. And then we can have a little bit of a think um, about what we can change about our thing. I would like to start building some builders. I would like to start building settlers again. I do have enough trade routes to justify having caravanseries. So I think for now I'm going to slot in caravansaries and then we'll have a little bit of a look at our um, civic situation when we finish military training. Because that's a lot of gold now. And we'll be able to use that gold for a lot of things. I think I'm going to swap positions on these two units and then attack with the archer. Then I'm going to move the horseman up and I'm going to level the horseman up so that he gets... Um, Let's see here. I could take Coursers, which would give him uh, more damage against ranged units, which would be pretty good. 
So I think I'll take Coursers here, because it makes them stronger. I think I'm going to move this Immortal over here, and then take a level up. I'm going to go for Tortoise. We're going to uh, rest one turn, or maybe a few turns on this unit. We're going to move here and attack. We're going to cross the river. I'm going to push this Archer over. We're going to begin to move the uh, the Great General over this way. Okay, so we finished construction. I'd like to, I would like to get shipbuilding. But irrigation is one turn, so I'm going to grab it because it's only a one turn technology. Um, so, so um, a one turn technology. If I wait longer before I do that, it becomes more wasteful in terms of opportunity. If it, it's a one-turn technology early in the game, I'm going to knock it out of the way. So we have Passar Gaudet. Um, I'm going to grab Ancient Walls here. Specifically, not because I need Ancient Walls, but because I get two envoys from Ancient Walls. One for Stockholm uh, and one for Valletta. And the reason... I get the boost here is because engineering has a boost called ancient walls and they're asking me to trigger the um trigger the eureka for uh for engineering i also want to at some point uh where is the calico yeah and i also want this because it's going to get me towards engineering which will let me um build catapults um, which is another boost for Kabul. So that's something I'm going to want to do too, because I want to I want to get more envoys, to get um, to get maxed out on them so that I have uh, more bo bonuses towards my encampment. So I have Passar Gade. Uh So I think I'll build the ancient walls because that's. I just kind of explained the rationale behind that a little bit. We're going to move over here. We have our galley. We're doing some exploration and we're moving around. I have a second horseman. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna move him up to the front line as well. Thousands have lived. We just finished the research for irrigation, which means we can now build um, plantations on luxury resources. T typically, mostly most of the plantations will exist on luxury resources. I think the only bonus resource plantation is bananas. So irrigation is a really nice technology to pick up if you have a lot of those uh, resources knocking around. Now I would like to pick up the wheel, um, but I also want to pick up shipbuilding. Um, in part because I want to build a couple of quadri rooms. Um, mo mainly because I want my land units to be able to embark. Because I want to start exploring the world, because I've pretty much conquered this island. So I need to start exploring the world to find the other players in the game. I'm going to fortify until healed on this unit. Uh, I'm going to scooch this archer over here and attack this archer. Oh, the Spear of Fionn. We need to send our units over here as well. That's something we need to do to get the power. Um, I'll explain that in detail when we're done here. Basically, when we move our units beside this natural wonder, uh, the Giant's Causeway, they gain more power. So let me hear uh, Giant's Causeway. Uh, land combat units that enter enter adjacent plots receive the ability Spear of Fionn, which is plus five combat strength. So this is a really nice thing we're going to have to get around to doing. But remember, um, if it's if it's thirty combat strength differential for a, a one hit kill, plus five combat strength is um, one sixth of the damage you need to get a one hit kill. So it's a lot of damage. A plus five combat boost is. We're going to start hitting the city now. We're in position to really suppress the city. You can see they've built a granary. You can see they've built a monument. And that's something I love about this game is like if you zoom in on a city, you can see kind of what they've been up to. Uh, if I look over here, they have a they have a water mill, but it's smoking. They don't have a monument. Uh, let's say if I were to zoom in on the city, you can see the monument right here. Let me get rid of the yield tiles. 
thing. You can see the monument is under construction and they're building a monument. That's something I love about this game is when you zoom in on the cities, you can really see what's been happening in those cities. You can see like I'm building walls. A little walls have appeared. I have a granary here. I have a monument. You know, there's a palace. I, I just love the granularity of how you can zoom in and see what's happening in your cities. Okay, so we... Um, we finished the, uh, the, the shrine in London. So now it's time to have a look at the city. It has a harbor and a holy site. Uh, so it might be a good idea to think about what's next. The city has a lot of growth potential because it has three wheat resources. So it might be a good idea to get a granary here to make this city grow a little bit taller. And in fact, I think it's perfectly reasonable to do that. But we also want to repair the water mill because it's going to give these wheat resources um, plus one food each, which would grow it even quicker. So I'm going to finish the water mill here. We're going to move the cavalry along. Uh, I'm going to get my ge great general finally in range to improve at least two of these immortals. So now if you see here, um, down at the bottom right, it says plus five combat strength from the great, uh, great general. So that's going to help a lot. Whereas if you look at this guy, he does not have this because he isn't in range of this sort of white circle. I'm going to keep moving our galley along to explore more of the world and to get around in position to fight Norway. We're going to send this galley on a very, uh, we're going to give it, a sort of a long chain of orders to London to go there and rest. So Tarsus uh, is housing capped. See the way this is a yellow number and it says four out of five. Um, it's not quite capped, but it's because it's housing, because there's only one room for population left, its growth is slowed by 50%. So we're going to want to build a granary here next. Um, to, to get its housing up so that it grows more. And the reason you want your cities to grow more is because the more citizens in a city, the more tiles it can work and the more yields you get from those tiles. And uh, I think we'll do one more turn here. So we're just trying to clear out this archer so that it stops being annoying. So we'll kill it there. We'll move the great general up a little bit closer, so now all my units are encompassed in its range. We'll move this guy over here one tile, and we'll begin assaulting the city. And you can see we're getting a lot of experience for this. We didn't quite kill the city, but we were very, very close. Oh, actually, had I shot with this archer, we would have killed the city. Yeah, I could have. That was a small mistake on my part. It's totally fine to make mistakes, you know, don't worry about it. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I have like a couple hundred hours in this game, and I still make mistakes all the time. Continuing to explore with this galley, and I think that's going to settle it for this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember, if you want to see more episodes of this series or any other series that I do, that you subscribe to my channel. If you want to directly support my channel and what I'm doing here, please leave a like on the video. It increases my rank on YouTube, it gives me more visibility, it's all around good stuff and it really is just a way to help me out. If you have any questions or concerns about this series or anything else, if you want to ask me about the game in general or perhaps other civilizations or perhaps problems that you came up with, please leave a comment. Other than that, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you all very much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.